we, oh, we, you know, the, the rivalry, we, we hate each other. Plenty of other teams that you can have a pop at that with. <laughs> but I'm having a pop at you now. Oh, yeah. Um, he, oh, he has had a pop at every other team, don't we? <laughs> yeah, oh, I know that, yeah. It's like the Larry David gif of him going like, oh. <laughs> Hey, up, Leeds fans. We are uh, Leeds United fan channel, and this is the Manchester United preview. Um, we also call them Scum. That's that's their name. Um, if you're a Leeds fan, <laughs> you might want to subscribe to the channel. And if at some point you uh, like this video, please give it a thumbs up. The following podcast contains some strong language and some very average opinions. Any references to actual people are wildly inaccurate. It's probably best if you don't listen at all. The Roaring Peacock Podcast. Welcome back. To the Roaring Peacock podcast. This is the match preview of Leeds United, greatest team in the world, saviors of the Premier League, uh, <laughs> bastions of Bielsa Ball um, against uh, Scumchester United, uh, that sort of greedy bastards um, that they, they wanted to uh, back from their jaunt in Europe. Back from our two day jaunt, yeah. Right. <laughs> Uh, so my name's Adonis and you know me as at the Adelites on Twitter it's a very good hello from me joining us representing the Roaring Peacock and the Mighty Whites it's Ryan Wignall good evening everybody and the stranger in Amids the devil among peacocks it's uh, Ewan from Red Voices how are you doing? I'm good thanks Ewan I'm very good thank you good right it's just um, the way you're smiling at me there just makes me think I should be prepared for something. Like I, I remember last time I was on back in the end of last year. Uh wasn't too bad to be fair, but I did remember several chants, if memory serves. And the way you're smiling at me just the, like feels like I should be prepared for something. No, um I have see I've you're on tenterhooks now. Mm -hmm. Um no, we've learned our lesson. We built it up, we built up the last game far too much, and we got way too excited. So <laughs> <laughs> a little bit more is it we're not making that mistake again no <laughs> right that's, that's right um okay so let's 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 start off with this um european super league then come on explain yourself what have you done uh what have i done yeah. uh, i spent most of the last week being horrified at the owner of my club and the chief executive who are both talking complete and utter rubbish um where to even start? It was poorly thought out. You know, it's another classic example of an owner and a chief executive having no common ground or understanding of football at its base level and its community level whatsoever and thinking they could get away with it. You know, I'm not buying for a second that anyone involved in this plan made a mistake. They made a decision and tried to get away with it. They're not suddenly wise after the fact because it's been, you know, nation global wide uproar to what's happened. <laughs> They got caught with their hands in the cookie jar and they're trying to turn face and it's not working, you know, and I think the ramifications of what's happened over the last week are going to be felt for a while to come. And, you know, if it ends up in United getting punished, we'll have to take it on the chin. Yeah, um, it was surprising to me that I was agreeing with Gary Neville and... Um, yeah, that must have been weird. It's very, very weird. Um uh, so, Ryan, has it made you hate Manchester United more, this European Super League stuff? Or no, was that even possible? No, I hate them full stop, you know. <laughs> no matter what, you know, <laughs> greedy bastards. Just going for it, for all in, you know. you got Woodward coming out saying he didn't have nothing to do with it and he's been complicit from start. What an absolute low-life scum get he is. Right. That's as simple as that, you know. And he's coming out and barefaced lying, yeah. saying that you know he, he won't accomplish it. Blah blah blah. It just beggars belief. What mm. what all these clubs have done, not just they, you know, them from the other side at Pennines, but uh, well, I've, I've heard enough of it. You know, move on. It's... Yep, totally agree. It was the second attempted coup this season after Project Big Picture, and um, I think everybody's basically had enough of it. So. Enough of agreeing with you, Ewan. Let's get on to uh, 
the, the, the derby of hate then. So recent results. Uh, we obviously don't pay any attention to, to your lot. Um, and I certainly don't watch Burnley games. So Manchester United 3, Burnley 1. Can you tell mm-hmm. us about that? Uh, took a while to get going. Uh, when United are slow, they play rubbish football and teams are able to sit back and defend with, the, with a massive degree of comfort once we started playing the ball a bit quicker and started shifting the play a little bit more, we were able to get the goals that we needed. You know, it, Burnley's a nasty fixture anyway. You know, it, it's just because they feel like such an immovable object and I hate playing them in general just because of that fact as well. And we always seem to end up with a couple of bumps and bruises from playing them. So to get through that game with, with a as healthy a scoreline as 3-1 suggests was nice you know yeah it took two late goals but we were good value for it you know once mm-hmm. Burnley equalized uh, there were a couple of moments here and there but we were good we were well deserving of the win you know it's I think that's about five wins on the trot now in the league you know there, there's a there's a semblance of form and consistency coming into the picture at the minute you know and it's coming in at the right time we're not playing amazing football but we're playing really effective football and given this last week was our first week off, our first midweek off for the whole season long. Um, I'm pleased that we we finally seem to be hitting a patch of form coming into a massive end of the season for us. Yeah, the league's gone, we know that, but we still need to be winning in Europe. So with hopefully three more games to go, we'll uh, be ending the season with some silverware with any luck. A couple of things I picked up on there. Five wins in a row. That sounds mm-hmm. good. Uh, that has to end at some point. Um, also, you, you, you were playing slow. Um, well, you couldn't have played quicker um, in that reverse fixture against us, so you can start playing slow again. I know we've mm-hmm. only been back for less than a season, but uh, can I just say that I don't think the Premier League needs teams like Burnley. They can just uh, we can just get rid of them. I mean, Ryan, if it's a choice between you and Burnley. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. Um, Ryan, Leeds United yes. won, Liverpool won. How was that? Um, eventually, it was pretty damn fantastic but mm. I think you know first half we, we struggled Liverpool really pressed us high put us under some real pressure mm. um, look, looked a bit like Liverpool of old with a, a bit of fire in the belly Yeah, um, we struggled to contain them really when they were getting in down our flanks quite easily uh, although not creating the best of chances Mesley didn't make too many top draw saves he made a couple and then, you know, they get the goal, get the nose in front. They still kept pressing for the first five, ten minutes of the second half. And then after that, they hit a brick wall. Mm. And we ran them to death after that. Um, we created a chance after Chay. Even in that first half, we had enough chances, you know, mm. maybe to, to nick a goal. And then the second half, four really good chances, I think. Yeah, we, we took one. Um, <laughs> and... Arguably, may you know, I, I mean, I think I said a fair result in the end, but I think we could have nicked it and saved football. Yeah, from the green, again. From, yeah, 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 again, you know. Yeah. Um, we but, should have won that game, shouldn't we? Hit the crossbar. I, I think so, yeah. Roberts yeah. from three yards out, slammed it straight at the keeper for no, no apparent reason. And yeah. we looked fairly secure in, in defence, especially in that second half as well. Okay, so let's get on to uh, Ewan's um, favorite part of the pod. So the reverse fixture. Um, I feel like I feel like I haven't seen uh, your lot play like that at any point this season. Um, I feel like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has passed the crack around on a on a silver platter with a, a crack pipe before the game <laughs> and because you've come out like. I don't know, like um, a rockets or something. I'm still not. Well, I know I know what happened, but I was still pleasantly surprised by how that game went down. Um, Have you ever seen McTominay play like Messi before? Did, did no you one's see seen that? Scott his... McTominay play like that before? Not even his mum. Good grief! I mean, the finishes <laughs> right. were immense, but mm. this is kind of the thing that set that game apart. You know. When since Leeds have come back up, it's been pretty. I mean, if I use the word enjoyable, it makes me sound like I've got pleasure out of it, which obviously I haven't, but it's still been good to watch. You know, it's been good to watch the team come up and have a go. And that's definitely something that you've done. I think 
one of the huge problems has been that because Bielsa has, well, initially for the first half of the season, played such a gung ho style. We we always have a go, lot. by the way. We always yeah, have and, a go. Yeah, yeah. We think I mean, we're hard enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the um the problem was is that if you give this United team too much space on the counter, you're going to get absolutely ripped to bits, and that's what kept happening throughout that game. You know, at, at no point during that match did it feel like you had got a handle on our attack. You know, and it could easily have been eight. You know, four goals in each half easily and the scoreline could have been far worse just because at no point did Bielsa try and tighten things up and it just played into United's hands it, it doesn't necessarily even need to be our top 11 to get it out there because our, our players are so good at getting the ball forward quickly and we've got some half decent finishes at the club that we were able to take advantage of it all day I mean no I did not expect Scott McTominay to come up with those thunder bastards but no regardless uh yeah, very much enjoyed it. I mean, what can, what can I say? You know, it's the first time we played each other in, what, 10 years and we beat you 6-2. Of course I loved it. It was amazing. Oh, God, I'm glad that bit's over. Um, yeah. Brian, how did, you, <laughs> how did you find that game? Oh, it was a nightmare, wasn't it? I, I built it up, I talked about it earlier. I built this game up so much. We're playing these scum bastards again. You know, yeah. we've got to get stuck into when we, we, oh, we, you know, the, the rivalry, we, we hate each other. I can't stand them. Mm. And then Scott McTominay. <laughs> Three minutes in, has scored two goals. He has got to be one of the shittest players yeah. in that squad. I, I mean, I don't watch him that often, but, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's scored and three minutes in, the game's done. You know, Basically, you know. Yeah. Uh, then it's 3-0, 4-0. Uh, it's, it, it became laughable at the end, didn't it? And, I was sat in rage, absolute rage, to be honest with you, mm. because it was just, it was, I, I can't describe it, you know. I think all Leeds fans probably felt the same, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, it, for me, right, apart from a, a very few mad moments, I actually didn't think we played that badly, to be honest. We've, we've, we've outpossessed them, you know, we've got 59% possession at Old Trafford. I, I really wonder if you go back through the annals of history, um, if we've ever had that much possession at Old, Tra- Old Trafford, it's 17 shots, you know? So it's not like, um, it's, it's not like we were completely outplayed for, for 6-2. I mean, it, it could have been, I think, could have been 12-10 or something. The game was so ridiculously yeah. open. Uh, I'm not for one second suggesting that we didn't deserve to lose because you can't defend like that against anybody, but especially against these lot because they've spent so much money, filthy, dirty oil money on, uh, on, was it, is it oil money? Oil money? No, no, that's the other one. Oh, okay. Where does it come from? I don't know. I haven't been keeping an eye on it. Oh, oh our money. Oh, yeah. uh, well, ourselves. Yourselves. Yes. Cause we're very good at making money and we were good at making money anyway. <laughs> You're in debt. <laughs> Well, you yeah, because, yeah, because the Glazers <laughs> bought us out and then bought your Manchester United with Manchester United. How can you be over <clears throat> over half a billion pounds in debt and say that you're very good at making money? Well, we were good at making money. I dended it. I mended. Okay, okay, okay. So it's <laughs> it's blood money anyway, probably. Um, allegedly. Um... <laughs> You can't just make up that just because you don't like the fact that we have money. That, that's, that's not how that works. Plenty of other teams that you can have a pop of that with. But I'm having a pop at you now. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, he has had a pop at every other team, don't we? <laughs> yeah, oh, I know that, yeah. <laughs> so you got your customary penalty, uh, mm-hmm. Bruno Fernandes. How many penalties is that? Um, because we once went 59 games, I think, without a penalty. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't keeping score. Uh... You get a lot, don't you, anyway? You don't deserve more, do you? One of the... Well, this is the thing about VAR, isn't it? It's not necessarily about whether or not you deserve it. You're going to get it, you know, if, if there's contact in the box. And our forwards are very good and very good at their feet, you know, in terms of the ball at their feet. And Martial in particular is fantastic at it. And yeah, you get soft ones, but every team gets soft decisions for them and against them during the season with VAR because you've still got exactly the same people making exactly the same mistakes that there's always been. You know, it's still a completely flawed process. Maybe you get more, get you get more, more than normal. Than previously, you but, get more than normal. Well, you get more. You get you get the rub of the green. You got mm, the referees in your pocket. Always I mean, have. <laughs>
some of the decisions that have gone against United have been farcical. Like you, you saw the game against Spurs a couple of weeks back where Scott McTominay brushes uh, Son's face and he goes down for like five minutes. I mean, that was ridiculous. You know, I'm Dis- disgusting challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Couch his eyes out. I thought you yeah. were not even shaking your head saying, no, nah, that was a ridiculous dive. No, disgusting <laughs> challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I expected. But no, I mean, VAR's flawed, isn't it? We all know it. And I think when it comes to penalties, the fact that you've still got the same, as I said, the same people making the same mistakes previously and the, the bar to actually clear a penalty is so low at the minute that and they've, they've been asked to look for almost any discrepancy they can. If you've got players who are fantastic with the ball at their feet in the penalty area and there's contact and they slow it down to the, you know, the smallest frame they can, then more often than not, they're going to give it. And... You know, I, I would say that perhaps United are better at taking advantage of that than other teams at the minute. And we've we've seen through the course of the season that we've been given a bunch of penalties because our players are finding themselves in good positions like that. Yep. And going to ground, whinging about it and asking for a penalty. Yeah, that's how that works, isn't it? Of course. Yep. Yeah, because <laughs> no other team because, does that. Because <laughs> we've seen, because I yell to Ian Pervader to do it every week and he never does, stays on his feet. <laughs> And passes it. Um, okay, so let's have some predicted lineups then. Uh, let's focus on this match on Sunday. So, you and uh, Henderson, Wambasaka, Obi Wambasaka, uh, Lindelof, Maguire, Shaw, McTominay, or McMessy, should we say? Um, hope he's not like that again, for fuck's sake. Um, I doubt Fred, it. I doubt it. No, me too. Um, Fred, uh, Fernandez, Rashford, Pogba, Cavani. Does that sound yeah. about right? Yeah, I mean, the only difference could potentially be whether or not if Rashford's fit to play in that game. You know, he's. I don't think he's trained over the last few days, and it's just again the a long time coming for him to have a proper week off. So, uh, given that we've got a game against Roma on Thursday, obviously it's not as important in a rivalry sense, but still a big game in the context of our season. I wonder whether Solskjaer will risk him. If not, you might see Dan James come in with Martial out injured at the minute. But the having the midfield pivot of uh, McTominay and Fred and allowing Pogba to sort of play off the left is helping quite a lot at the minute. You know, it gives us a bit more freedom of movement. It means Pogba doesn't have to drop deep. He's He can do a lot of damage when he's got a bit more space and a bit more of attacking impetus. So I, I'm enjoying that sort of setup at the moment. Okay. And Ryan, uh, Melier in goal, Ailing on the right, Lorente and Strauch in the middle, Alioski on the left. Calvin Phillips, Helder Costa, Stuart Dallas, Tyler Roberts, Jack Harrison, Patrick Bamford. Not going to change, is he? No, it won't change. I think Rafinha is going to be a massive miss. Yeah. You know, sure. You know, he, he, Costa just offered nothing the other night, didn't he? Mm. To be honest. Um, but saying that, he, he can be in and out, Costa. And hopefully it's one of his, his going days tomorrow. Uh, Sunday, sorry. You know, yeah. Would you like to see Pervader start ahead of him? It's it's a difficult one because I think Pervader's really good coming off the bench. Mm. I think he's a really good impact player. Yeah. Um, but maybe he does deserve a chance to start the game. Um, but who do you see attacking Luke Shaw better, Pervader or Costa? On the other night, I'd say Pervader. Mm. If if we're just going solely on the other night. But against City, cost I thought Costa were very good. Yep, and just the other bit of team news was that Adam Forshaw is out again, so another huge miss. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Adam Forshaw. <laughs> Man, he can't get a break, that guy. Okay, Bob so uh, the referee, Craig Pawson. Ewan, does that mean anything to you, Craig Pawson? Do you know what? I'm not very good with referees and faces, apart from just enjoying Mike Dean's general ridiculousness. So, right, well, if you, like Mike Dean, fine. if you like Mike Dean, he is uh, at Stockley Park for <laughs> this Sunday game. Oh, fantastic. Can't wait. <laughs> Man's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so we've looked at recent results. We've looked at the reverse fixture, begrudgingly, and we've had some <laughs> predicted lineups, and we've also... Uh, panned the officials so you should have everything you could possibly need to make an informed uh, match preview prediction so with all that in mind Ewan mm-hmm. oh sorry um, so for new listeners and to refresh your memory you get one point for guessing <clears throat> a correct result so a win draw or a loss you get two extra points for guessing the exact scoreline and you get an extra bonus point 
for predicting goal scorers. But to stop you gaming the system and naming every player on both squads, you get minus one point for each incorrect goal scorer name. So with all that in mind, what would your match preview prediction be? Oh, me? Uh, uh, I'm going to go for 2-2 two, two, Dallas and Bamford from your lot and Pogba and Cavani for us. Okay. Ryan? Yep. Um, yeah, there's no draws. We aren't losing this game. We're winning this game. We're going to win it comfortably. 3-1. Yeah. Bamford is going to score. <laughs> Snigger all you like. We are. You know, not many teams do double over us. Uh, and I, I'm certain this time that it won't be used to it double over us. I'm, all, I'm absolutely certain of it. Um, we, we're unbeaten in five. And I think that's going to carry on. I really do. Oh, so mum, gonna... look what we've what? gone and done. We three beat the scum. Three, one. Three, one. There it is. <laughs> <sighs> Well, I'd love that. I would love that. I'm, you know what? I'm feeling quite confident as well, to be honest with you. Um, my only fear is that if we go ahead, that they'll they'll come back because you've done that a number of times this season. You know, um, you've you've gone behind um, deservedly, and then undeservedly got some late goals. Twenty eight points from winning positions this season. It's uh... losing position. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry, yeah, losing yeah. positions. Um, right. It's not an accident. This team, are they can be really slow out of the blocks. I think they need to get jolted into life, and it's something next season we've definitely got to sort out. But it keeps happening. You know, we keep falling behind, and we keep finding a way to respond. You know, they've, they've got a lot of mental fortitude without wanting to sound too much like a wanker. Um, it's all right. You, you're, you're a man. Yeah, yeah. Man yeah there fans, it though. is. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking walked into that one, Jesus. Um, but yeah, they they're strong. You know, they will they they keep working hard, and the fact that we've got the likes of Pogba and Fernandez and Martial, Rashford, Cavani, etc. They they make chances and they create chances and they score goals. So mm. even if we're not playing at our best, there's always a chance that we're going to score. You know, you'd not be able to say that about United a lot over the last sort of five years or so. And I think that definitely marks us out from teams of the past. Okay, and what have uh, what's been your impression of Leeds United this season? You touched on it a bit before, but I mean, you might be able to tell me differently. But I feel like since the around the time that we played you at Old Trafford, and maybe the couple of weeks after that, it does seem like Leeds have become more difficult to beat, and maybe a little bit more sensible in their play. I appreciate you still being obviously going at teams, and you know, you look at. But I look at the game against City, obviously with the the late winner. Uh, the Etihad a couple of weeks ago, which was did you a, celebrate that by the way? Um, I kind of did, and I stopped because I remembered what it actually meant. So it was, it's like the Larry David gif of him going like, oh, mm, <laughs> bit of both. But no, I mean, you'll be able to tell me differently, but I do feel like over the course of the season, it has been a little bit less gung ho. You know, there has been a little bit more control about performances, and the results are kind of evened out a little bit more to the extent where they're not more, there's not thrashings either way you know it feels like top score lines are a lot tighter and it feels like this team's getting on top of itself a little bit more and it's like you know i mean look at the fact that you're around arsenal now obviously arsenal not necessarily the best barometer to be, to be talking about at the minute but given you know the fact that you've come back into the premier league in the middle of a bloody pandemic to be mid-table i don't think there's anything to be sniffed at it's been pretty impressive yeah um ryan would you agree with uh, ewan or not so much no i just think it's just coincidental that We've got actual centre half playing at centre half, and we've got a, you know, the, as well as you know, as signings that we've signed. Mm. Lorente has been outstanding these last yeah. few weeks, uh, you know, months since he's come back into the team. Yeah. Strauk as well has been another fine. Cooper's been fantastic. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think last time we had Dylan at centre back, mm. uh, last time we played over there, and. It, it, you know, we, we've had we've toyed around with different centre back partnerships, and I think that's the reason, the main reason why we've we've tightened up at the back. Also, Phillips, it just gets better and better week in, week out, and I think that's another solid reason why we're, we're more solid at the back. We haven't changed the style, you know. We are still very much gung ho, as he says, 
So yes. we, we will we will go at teams no matter what. Yeah. You know, even again, you mentioned the city game. Yeah, we got we got forced into a situation where we had to defend, and we proved that we can defend. But we still went at them. Yeah. You know, We're still Rafine running had at... a great. Rad Rafine had a great chance before Dallas did. Yeah, it's true. Uh, you know, we didn't. When we got chance to go, we went, and yeah. I think that that. I, I just think the, the the key the key ingredient to us mm. having a better defensive record and one of the best defensive records since the turn of the year mm. has been Lorenzo. Yeah, and, wholeheartedly uh, agree. Yeah. So the last time that we played uh, in the reverse fixture, so it was Ailing uh, at centre back. You're right. Yeah. Um, Alioski at left back, Dallas on the on on the right, and that's probably the one place that I think Dallas didn't necessarily. Fit right in. Um, Click and Rodrigo haven't been great this season. Let's face no. it, especially not in um, in the, the out of out, out of possession, especially not without the mm. ball. Um, so Alioski, Click, and Rodrigo are basically the, the the players that have been underperforming in our squad, mm. and especially in that that centre of the the field. That's where you that's where you did us. <laughs> so it was Click yeah. and Rodrigo, and and instead now we've had. Uh, Stuart Dallas in the middle and who else? Oh, Roberts. Roberts. So, say what you like about Roberts. He does work hard off the ball though. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I would, I would, I would have to agree with Ryan there and um, that it's, it's been the change of personnel. Um, we have absolutely gone and out and had a go at every single team uh, this year. All right. So some final thoughts then. You and hmm? I'm not going to say I'm looking forward to it. The fear will kick in about 12 on Sunday and I won't be looking forward to it. Uh, It'll just... One of those games at the minute, considering that we're getting to the real business end of the season now with, you know, big game coming up in midweek, get in up to Ellen Road and get out. That's all we ever want to do in this fixture. And, you know, obviously with what's happened in the last week as well, it's not going to be a nice welcome, is it? It never would be. But, it's you know, even in a pandemic, I can guarantee that there's going to be a horrific welcome for that team bus once it rocks up <laughs> Ellen Road. Get in, get out, get some sort of result. Fine. Shatterproof windows you, you're going to need. I'm telling you, <laughs> there'll be bottles and everything and all sorts being thrown at that coach. Uh, Ryan? Um, oh, I, you know, I'm opposite to you and I, I am pumped again. You know, mm. this, just chatting now just got me on, on edge and I am I'm raring to go. I, I can't wait. You know, we all know my feelings against this team. I freaking hate them. I can't stand them. Really? You know, yeah, nothing. I, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just, Pure hatred running from my bones, you know. I I, I can't wait. We are going to win. I, I think, um, and I seen a little quote from from Fred this week, calling it the uh, English Classico, which is it's quite astounding that like Fred had say that. You know, he's never mm. been involved in a game like this once this season, obviously. But you, you can tell that the old guard who were, who were still at uh, over there. A, 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 they're really putting it into him to say, this is the game, you know, mm. this is massive. And it is massive. I don't mm. care what anyone says. This is our game. I don't care about any other team in this le- in this league apart from beating these this weekend. And I, and I don't care what they say, them scummers. They feel the same. I know for a fact to do. Okay. And just some stats to finish it off then. Uh, uh, should <clears throat> Dallas score on Sunday, he will become the seventh Leeds United player to score home and away in the league in the same season versus Manchester United um, will be uh, looking to be unbeaten at home against Manchester United, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool, and Manchester City for the first time since 1992-93. And uh, we've only beaten Man United at home four times in the last 14 home league games, 94-95, 95-96, 97-98, in 2000, 2003. And the last time we played the scum in April was amazingly the same date in 1999 as uh, it will be on Sunday. It was a one-all draw with Jimmy Floyd, Hasselbank and Andy Cole, the scorers on the day. So if you like this video, uh, give us a thumbs up. That'd be great. Uh, If you're listening on the podcast, obviously uh, you can't give us a thumbs up. So maybe just to... Give us a thumbs up wherever you are. And um, if you're walking around town, there'll be some sort of 
strange people looking at you and they'll there'll be this awkward moment where do they give you the thumbs up too are you giving them the thumbs up or is that weird because they don't know you i'm not Um, sure you thought this one through mate i'll be honest (laughs) yeah all right (laughs) wasn't that obvious (laughs) (laughs) uh my name is Adonis, and you know me as at the Adelites on Twitter. It's a very good buy from me, and joining us today, representing the Mighty Whites, the greatest team in the world, uh, Ryan Wignall. One, two, three, four. No, it's Ryan Wignall. One. No. Yeah. The other <laughs> that's one. The other wig- that's the other wigget. Yeah. <laughs> and good from uh, Red Voices MUFC podcast, it was the Ewan. The Ewan, thank you. The Ewan. The Ewan. <laughs> the Red Ewan. We've got a Ewan. Have you? Yeah. Oh, of course you told me this last time. All right. Yeah, the other one. That's fine. Yeah. I'll deal with that. That's fine. Pleasure, okay. Gents. Next time you're on. That's your lot. Come on, Leeds. Get in, John Leeds. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Most of our stats come from LUFC Stats or LUFC Data on Twitter. A very special thanks to Barney Stewart, Cooper Ewan and Howard Metcalf, Josh Pearson, Laura, Leon and Rob, The Light Show and all our family and friends. So many games to play, don't care what's on your mind.